Alright guys, well here we are today. A little bit different video than uh, what you're used to from me. Today is a bit of a test video or an experiment video. Um, we're going to talk about the age-old question of does glyphosate hurt your viable seed when planting a food plot? Um, we're going to test to see if the seed gets wet from the glyphosate mixture with water um, when you're spraying specifically in a non-till uh, food plot scenario will it hurt the germination of the seed? Uh, that's what we're going to test today. And I'll tell you, uh, today we're going to go over the experiment. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. And then make sure you go ahead and subscribe and like this video uh, to get notified whenever I do the update videos uh, to see how this experiment goes. Um, I'm going to be keeping you updated uh, in the next couple weeks uh, just to check out the results. And I may be doing more experiments with this as well. I'll tell you, the big reason why I'm, I'm doing this experiment is because I did actually test this last year. Uh, undocumented um, because I had a, a food plot failure uh, when I believe some of my seeds um, got wet from the uh, glyphosate spray that I did in a no-till method and I believe it caused it um, to not germinate so I actually did the test at home last year around this time and I had some pretty interesting results from it um, the seed that actually sprayed with glyphosate actually did not germinate at all compared to the seed that I did not spray. So that's what we're going to test today. We're going to test um, to see what it does as far as germination. We're also going to test uh, a little bit of different ratio mix with the glyphosate in the water. Uh, so we're going to test that. You're going to see this typically in the no-till method um, for food plotting. And what that is for people that don't know is basically um, a lot of us without big farm equipment and without wanting to till the ground We'll go ahead and spread your, your food plot seed right into a uh, maybe some weeds, maybe it's rye, maybe it's buckwheat, and then we'll actually roll um, the weeds, uh, rye or buckwheat, uh, right over top of the seed, creating a thatch layer. And then we'll go ahead and spray that, that layer with glyphosate to actually terminate uh, that crop. So therefore you have a, a dead crop um, laying over top of your seed. Now, and I'll be the first one to say that I've used this no-till method, um, you know, a bunch of times, and it works great. It does. And uh, but the main thing is, is you always have a thatch layer. And kind of my theory is, if this glyphosate does kill the seed, is the reason being that the glyphosate is not actually getting down to the seed and getting the seed wet. Um, and that that very well could be. And that that may be why you have uh, good results with the no-till method. Um, I will say this: if the glyphosate does kill the seed. You know, think about spots in your food plot where you don't have as thick of a thatch and your spray is actually getting down to your seed, getting down to ground level. You know, is it terminating uh, those seeds as well? So that's what we're going to take a look here and just something to think about in the future here. So uh, let's continue. All right, guys, so I apologize for the mower sound in the background. Uh, this is the two type of seeds that we're going to test today. We have uh, more of a brassica. We have some turnips. Let me show you the actual label here and show you the germination rates. So this is what is in this seed mix. Um, we're going to put this all into pots. This is all going into pots. Okay, there's that one. Now something um, to look at here with this seed. Now I actually tried this seed last year um, in my initial test. Now this, you will see that the seeds, and actually I dumped a little bit, the seeds are blue. Seeds are blue. Guarantee you I'm going to have a little uh, germination of turnips here in, in the actual yard. Um, so the seed is blue. It has this rain bond um, for absorption. And you can read that if you'd like. So uh, when I did this initial test last year, I thought, man, maybe the only reason why the glyphosate killed the seed is because it has that rain bond. But, you know, you have to know that there are seed companies out here that do have this sort of inoculant or whatever you want to call it on the seed. So that is something to be, um, something to consider. I will say I did try this uh, test last year with just straight rye cereal, cereal rye last year without any kind of inoculant, um, and it did die as well. So here is our next one, just a cheap clover cheap clover um, blend here and it is not it does not have any kind of rain bond or anything like that here is your label if you want to read that just to check out what's all on this blend okay so there's the two seeds that we're going to be doing here 
Okay guys, <clears throat> here we have our pots here. Uh, dirt has come straight out of the garden. Uh, the garden has not had any lime or synthetic fertilizer in it recently at all. Um, I currently have a giant pumpkin growing in it. I have plenty of space, so that's where I got the dirt from. All right, we're gonna start off here with some of the brassica. Okay, we're gonna start off here with some of the brassica. So I'm just gonna put, put a good amount of seed in there. Good amount of seed. Next, I will do the clover. Okay, and obviously, uh, this is way more seed than what you would actually put um, in the ground. You're gonna have a lot more spacing, but I'm gonna try to keep it consistent with, with each pot here. Um, so next, we're gonna go ahead and spray both these pots with the uh, glyphosate. Okay, guys, I don't know if you can see there, but we got approximately one gallon of water here um, in this sprayer. Uh, I cleaned this sprayer out uh, really well since the last time I used it. I only use Gly in it anyways, um, but right there is exactly one gallon of water. Okay, and next, this is uh, going to be pretty important for this uh, experiment here. We have the uh, percentages that we'll be spraying with. Sorry, there's a train. I don't know if you can hear the train or not. Sorry about that. Um, so here's our percentages. We have one gallon that we'll... We have one gallon in our tank. We're going to be testing 2% and 5% today. Those seem to be the um, kind of the common range for uh, no-till food plotting, uh, glyphosate mixing with water. Um, we may test more eventually. What we're going to see is if the 2% does not kill and the 5% does kill, we'll go in the middle and we're going to try to find out what the limit is. Um, if neither one kills, then I guess I'm a liar. <laughs> but uh, um, so, or if the two percent kills, we'll go low. We'll go lower and uh, try to find try to find that sweet spot. But all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do. We're gonna start out with the two percent here first. So that's two and two thirds ounce um, and the one gallon sprayer. So we'll we'll continue here. And this is the uh, glyphosate that we're gonna be using today. Um, a lot of you probably use it. Uh, picked this up at Tractor Supply. Um, it's already got a surfactant in it, um, so I'm not, I will not need to be adding it. Um, but as you can see, this is just 41% glyphosate. Um, so this is what we're going to use here in this uh, mixture test. All right, guys, so here's my glyphosate all measured out. Um, about two and two-thirds there of uh, glyphosate in fluid ounces. Um, that's about as close as I'm going to get. I'm usually not even this technical with my, uh, with my food plots. Um, but always, guys... Make sure you have some kind of PPE when you're dealing with these chemicals. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, put it in the mixture. All right, guys, well, here we go. One gallon of water mixed with two and two-thirds ounce of glyphosate. Uh, we're going to spray the clover first. Here we go. Give it a couple pumps. I'm going to be using um, kind of a fan, kind of a fan nozzle. Try to get this as, as accurate as possible to how you would spray out in the field. So just a quick swipe. take a look. So looking at it, um, I can see that some of the seed does appear to be wet. Um, shiny. So, oh, sorry. It is shiny, so some of the seed definitely did get wet. So we will see what it does here. Okay guys, next we have the turnip brassicas. Uh, so we're going to spray that now. Just one quick good swipe. Um, you can definitely see the dirt is wet. And this seed, it actually, you can tell a lot better um, if it's actually wet. So this seed is wet. Um, so we're going to see and uh, we're going to label both of these as the 2% uh, glyphosate. And uh, we'll just kind of set it out here and go from there. Alright guys, we're on to the 5% glyphosate mix. We're at 6.5 ounces here. So that's going to go right in the tank. I actually dumped out uh, all the existing 1 gallon um, of the 2%. Uh, yeah, waste of glyphosate, but for this experiment I don't care. I want to do this correctly. So 6.5 glyphosate right there going in. Now 
we're going to spray the brassica with the 5%. Alright guys, well here we are. I don't know if you can even see what that says. Okay, so here we are. We are 2%, 2% um, seeds here, 5% seeds here, and then this is more of our control here, just seeded, uh, no spray whatsoever. This is non-sprayed, so this is your 5%, 2% here. And I'm just going to let it sit here. Um, I did this experiment last year, and I just let the pot sit here. And uh, I may not even water, um, I may not even water for the next 24 hours. I may water uh, maybe about 24 hours from now. The dew a lot of times will get these uh, these seeds to germinate anyways. I know these pots here are slightly bigger than these ones. I know before anybody gripes about it, there's plenty of variables in this. I'm not a scientist. Um, but before anybody gripes about it, that's all I had. I didn't have any more of these size ones. Um, so it should matter because we're just going with germination basically. We'll give you guys an update here in a couple days once I start seeing some action. Alright guys, something else I want to disclose here as well. I don't know if you can see all this uh, white stuff. I actually put snail and slug bait around the pots here. Um, just to keep anything from happening. Um, you know, trying to keep any insects from uh, messing with this uh, experiment here. So, just wanted to disclose that. We got snail and slug bait all around the pots. Um, just to keep, hopefully keep anything from... Uh, eating the seeds here. Alright guys, so that should do it for the experiment here. Uh, just let me say first off that I in no way, shape, or form am trying to trick anybody, I'm um, trying to convince anybody, and I'm, I'm not against glyphosate at all. I use it all the time. Um, so I just want to do this test. It's something I've always wondered myself, uh, especially with food plot season rolling up here uh, shortly. I'm going to be doing some food plots myself. Um, I, you know, I just want to see, really, at the end of the day, does glyphosate getting on your viable seed, does it affect the germination rate? Um, that's what we're just testing here. here. And also, you know, percentage-wise, does the percentage even make a difference? Like I said, guys, go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to keep updated on this experiment. Uh, I'll be posting here soon with some updates, so uh, just go ahead and click to get notifications uh, when this next video is uploaded on this. Um, I'm excited about this. Um, you know, I, I did a little, little experiment last year. Um, I'm not a scientist. Is there plenty of variables with this? Sure, there is. Um, but, you know, it's just something fun to do and something that, you know, you can learn. Just because what people tell you uh, doesn't always mean that's 100% uh, the truth. Sometimes you got to take it into your own hands and just uh, try something yourself and just experiment with it and see what happens. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you here real soon. Thanks, guys.